Hello munchkins and viewers alike, it's me Munchie and welcome back to an introduction video today on two lovely Syrian hamsters. So I wanted to share with you this rescue's journey and story because it involves multiple people and it's because of wonderful volunteers, helpers, and escorters that these hamsters were transported from Oregon all the way up to Washington State. So today I want to thank none other than Hubba Hubba Hamstery for rescuing the these hamsters herself and then transporting them into the care of Cuddles and Scales which then transported all the way back up here and I went and picked them up. So this story is going to probably surprise you. I am going to be talking about hamsters that were being housed in a Tiny Tails and the PetSmart employees are unfortunately to blame in this situation. A lot of the times it's the owner going out and just purchasing the cage off of the shelf without help but in this situation the owners were quite chatty with Hubba Hubba Hamstery and explained to her exactly the situation that went on, exactly what the PetSmart employees recommended to house multiple Syrians in. So this rescue is going to also contain footage from Hubba Hubba Hamstery just because she was the one that has the Tiny Tails cage. I am hopefully going to get that cage from her just because I want to make a video and I already let her know, hey, next time we transfer some more hammies up here or just transfer in general, I would like cage just because it's gonna be used for educational purposes. As you all know, about a year ago, I reviewed the cage, but I am planning on making an educational video, including the cage, because it's still a hot topic and because we are seeing the Tiny Tails rotating into the Craigslist rehoming ads of hamsters now. I currently have two Tiny Tails cages from rescues that I'm hoping to use in the future to make a very cool video. But today's story is all about Pancake and Hammy. Yes. Yes, you heard me correctly, we got another hammy because remember guys, I recently got and it's funny too because it was a duo rescue as well but they were housed in separates. Remember hammy and chocolate? which were Scarlet and Blue. Hammy was Scarlet, and now we have another Hammy. But this one, we are going to rename Hammy to Waffles. Waffles and Pancake will be their names. So it will all start with how they were advertised online because I do have the original advertisement. And this was found on Facebook Market, which does not allow hamsters. However, because it was advertised mostly as a cage ad, it was very deceiving and good eye to the person who originally spotted this and notified Hubba Hubba Hamstery because I would not have noticed at all unless I was constantly scrolling down. And I bet you they did see the Tiny Tails cage and thought to themselves, huh, this is a bad cage and somebody's already trying to sell it off. <sighs> Yikes. But let's just read it here. It's on my phone. All right, the ad description says, Hamster Cage is a light up rocket ship. It comes with exercise wheel, water bottle, connection tubes, platforms, two medium exercise balls, willow chew stick, sand bath powder, and bathing container, bedding, and food, whatever is left, and food bowl. Also included are two female hamsters. PM me for more info and pictures. That right there is quite deceiving because the title was Hamster Cage. So at the very end, of the description they included that two available hamsters were coming with the cage if you bought it. Now I do want to make a note too that they rehomed for a wonderful rehoming fee of just $20 because uh, you noticed that cage and that setup and what they said. That was about $150 they spent on these hamsters and unfortunately it was improper care and they could have spent that $150 more wisely if only they were better informed. But guess what PetSmart employees at this location are doing and are possibly continuing this horrible trend wherever this ad was originally located because they, those owners, the past owners, were unsuspecting. They just didn't know and they were so thankful that they were properly educated by Hubba Hubba Hamstery. So thank you Hubba Hubba Hamstery for spreading awareness and educating because sometimes there's a time and a place to educate the past owners but sometimes the past owners may not even listen because they don't care. But these people often Obviously did. But these PetSmart employees at this location are possibly continuing a very deadly and dangerous cycle of suggesting improper husbandry. Syrians are solitary. These guys are Syrians. They should be solitary. Otherwise, they could fight to the death and it'll end very poorly. So the next clip is from Hubba Hubba Hamstery describing the situation and what she witnessed. So if anybody wants to know more about Hubba Hubba Hamstery, say that like 10 times fast. Hubba Hubba Hamstery, Hubba Hubba Hamstery, Hubba Hubba, Hubba Hubba Hamstery. There we go. Gotta make a 
deeper voice and say hubba hubba history, hubba hubba history. But if you would like to know more about hubba hubba hamstery, she's an ethical breeder of the Portland, Oregon area. So check her out. Links to her page will be down below. But this clip is of her and of the first discovery of the two hamsters, pancake and waffles. So long story short, these are two adult serines in the Tiny Tails rocket ship that um, somebody who is, I guess, on my page noticed and sent me um, an FYI about asking if I could help out. So I went and picked them up way far away. It took <laughs> like an hour and a half each way. Here's the story. So they were sold from PetSmart with this equipment to an owner back in July. The people hadn't had hamsters since they were kids. They're, you know, middle-aged, maybe a little younger than middle-aged adults. You know, they went in, they fell in love and, you know, asked what had changed basically about hamster care. Of course, those lovely pet smart employees trained the way they are said, here's what you should use. The tiny tails cage, which is like, I can't even, I can't even begin to describe all the things that are wrong with it. Look, it, first of all, there's no way it could hold enough bedding in this at the bottom. The size is shocking. The tubes are too small. The owners actually told me that the hamsters are getting stuck in them. The owner told me that they just take out the platforms because they're flinging themselves off the platforms. I've seen them climb the bars and fling themselves down multiple times. And I just got them here. And did I already say that they had to remove the tubes because they're too small and the hamsters are getting stuck? These hamsters, they are truly about the size of my five and a half week old hamsters. They're way undersized. I don't know what all is going into this, but I think partially they're being fed the Katie food. The Forda diet is not the worst, but it's, it's low quality, little too low protein for, for these guys, especially at a young age. Here's my favorite part of the situation. These owners who really cared about their hamsters went back into the store and said, it stinks. It's the, the smell is unbearable, I can't take it. So here is what Pet Smart employee recommended. Cat litter. Paper crumbles doesn't sound so bad. Baking soda for maximum odor control. Well, baking soda is an irritant. And they've got really sensitive skin and respiratory systems. They are probably itching like crazy, these poor little, little guys. Hi, sweeties. Are you waking up? Hi, little girl. That one's pancake. Oh, the one who's sleeping is apparently hammy until further notice, I guess. But this is what these people who cared about their hamsters knew something was wrong with their setup were told to do. They also have teeny tiny dark colored balls, two of them, Oops, lots of tubes. And they were also told, you know what hamsters like? Sand baths. And they were given powder. So the fact that these guys haven't died for which, you know, the powder is obviously really bad for them. It's really irritating to the respiratory system. The fact that these little guys have not succumbed to some sort of respiratory illness is really impressive. Hi, Pancake. Hi, sweetheart. You can see where they've been chewing on the bars. The next clip you're gonna see is her describing what they're gonna be transported in and what they are currently in. They're in a 50 gallon Sterilet bin cage that's been DIY'd with side panels from Critter Trails, if you've noticed. Critter Trails uh, are being reused to purpose bigger, more suitable bins. So she got some sides and some top areas for those wires that she DIY'd. She does such an excellent job with these bins. I absolutely love them. And in this video, she describes what the hamsters are getting, but they're gonna be transported transported with those setups into my care. Here's the two cages that I'm gonna put the two new rescues in. They're 50 gallon bins, Sterilite. They're also sometimes called the 200 quart bins, same difference. And they're from Walmart, they cost 25 bucks. I added ventilation, this one, they're gonna stack. So this one has ventilation on the sides. The other one has ventilation on the top. These are really basic setups because it's kind of spur of the moment. I didn't have time to think of what I was gonna do. So each of them, the back, have some orchard grass just for you know, some texture, some interest. Um, it's a buried glass container that I got at a discount store. Same thing on the other side. They also both have dollar store boxes, cardboard, just cut little holes in them. They each have dollar store ceramic containers and dollar store dog bowls that I use the sand baths. They're a good size for it. Obviously water bottles. We're trying to reuse the one that came with the rocket ship. It looks actually, I think it's the only thing I do like about this rocket ship. I like to use Benda bridges to do this, but I like to give kind of a tunnel starter to hamsters that haven't burrowed before. 
So these are two berry containers that are glued together with holes cut in them to kind of teach them how to burrow. Another thing is they're tiny. They are about the size of my si not even six week old pups. So while this nine inch exotic nutrition silent runner is not appropriate for a full grown Syrian, in this case, I'm gonna see if it fits her. Got the Carolina Storm Wheel. The other side here, that should definitely fit for her. The two extremely solitary adult Syrian hamsters have been living in the same itty bitty cage and they both look okay. I'm sure you've probably heard that they will fight to the death if they are kept together. The reason that this probably hasn't happened yet, although no guarantees they haven't fought when I, when I get to take them out and check them over, but the reason that they haven't probably been fighting as extensively as you'd think is because they don't have any resources to fight over. There's just not enough going on in the cage for them to really have any of their normal hamster instincts, and that's just incredibly sad. But again, I would not be surprised if I get in there and find some not so great things going on. These hamsters were picked up from Pet Smart in July, so they should be under a year. So there's just some follow-up things that I want to go over with you guys just because Hubba Hubba Hamster did discuss this with me via a text message. So this is what she said about the current cage right here. In the video you just saw, she did mention that these hamsters were bought and purchased back in July, so they only had them for about two months, uh, something like that. Don't know when in July, but it's the end of September, so we're just gonna say two months. So at least these hamsters didn't go crazy together, and she also did make a point in her videos that the hamsters most likely were not fighting because they didn't have anything to fight over in their enclosure. She also wanted to let me know that there was most of the time the hamster spent climbing the bars so unfortunately the bars had a bunch of urine all over them. Uh, the cage itself was relatively clean except for the bars and that the previous owner took the ledges out because they were jumping so high off of them that there was really no point in keeping them up there because the owner thought it was a safety hazard and it was and it is and I still Still get people on that rocket ship video defending the rocket ship saying that it's cool to them i was just being too mean there is valid points in that video that i i know people get very defensive especially kids when they see something they like it's for valid reason that hamsters should not have levels they should have safe levels that they can work their way up to. They do like looking out from a ledge. You shouldn't really be building up that high, especially for an area, surface area that doesn't really have a lot of support. You can work your way up with ledges, but you just, you really gotta be careful uh, if you start noticing your hamsters jumping from them. Unfortunately, they could not use all of their enclosure because of the ledge concern, because they just kept falling off or jumping off. And she did mention that the hamsters were getting stuck in the tubes. They are tiny. So what possibly might've happened was they might not have been stuck but just very uncomfortable especially for the winding tubes. PetSmart put a lot of their money into designing this cage and unfortunately this specific cage along with the racing car came with lights so instead of PetSmart investing money in a more suitable enclosure and making it more sturdy or making it so their materials don't suck they invested in putting lights on a cage. Hello PetSmart! What are you doing? So it's interesting to note that because I don't think I noted that in the first Tiny Tales review video, but that's a valid point. And that's also what Hubba Hubba Hamstery said. But she also mentions that he, the owner, went back after he was so frustrated with this cage design that he asked, hey, there has to be a better enclosure out there. They keep jumping from the ledges. And you know what the PetSmart employees said? And I don't know if this was one PetSmart employee or multiple PetSmart employees. It's just this little location in Oregon told them oh yeah just put them in a 10 gallon put them in the 10 what what hello 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 pet smart are you there are you suggesting they put two adult oh gosh I'm doing I'm doing the motions two adult Syrian hamsters in a 10 gallon hello Xena if you guys remember Xena and Goldie my rescued hamsters which I only rescued Xena but Goldie's story was also attached they were housed in a 10 gallon for eight months I lost Xena within a week of having and rescuing her and her whole life was spent in a 10 gallon enclosure with another hamster that had bite wounds galore cool pet smart cool man oh man if i took a trip down to pet smart and was asking all these pet smart employees in oregon what they recommend for hamster care and they told me they told me that i would have been like hey hi i'm just gonna whip out my phone here 
Here's my account. Look me up. Do your research. What are you doing? I would probably have like a pamphlet in my hand saying, hey, that's not the right care. I wish you would look at this a little bit. You know, look at this. Look at all the links and the people credited in this little pamphlet here. And maybe start doing your research because you're selling animals and you're selling them bad care. And it looks bad on you, PetSmart, that I like to name a lot. PetSmart, 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 hamster cage, PetSmart, this, 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 and that. Because of the inappropriate care that they recommend. I've actually had a few wonderful people who watch my channel that are actual PetSmart employees and they've either met me in person, hi, or they have told me in comments they're a PetSmart employee, which you probably shouldn't say exactly if you're a PetSmart employee, just keep it a pet shop for your safety. But not all PetSmart employees are bad. This one is going to create a horrible cycle. It's unfortunate that this did happen. It just gets, it gets so bad because they first recommended when the guy went back that, oh yeah, use cat litter with baking soda which is an irritant to small animals yeah this is just terrible being told incorrect information a second time and then third strike incorrect information on a 10 gallon and that's when the owner decided you know what I don't think this is right and he listed them for sale because he just he unfortunately could not understand their care and because he got so frustrated with it and not had a good experience with these hamsters it just became a problem and that's not what I want I want people to get excited about hamster care and get excited to own a hamster now, if they would have come to me when I worked at a pet store, I would have told them this, I would have told them that, I would have shown them pictures of my DIY setups, which is what I used to do all the time at my pet store that I worked at. And people were so thankful. They're like, wow, I'm so glad that you were working today and you know what we need and you're so knowledgeable and you're so understanding and you want to walk with us for like about 30 minutes just to get what you need right now and then hopefully get some more on either Amazon or wherever because a lot of the times people would either go with the preview 528 which was my recommendation for Syrians or they would go with like Syrian hides I recommend a lot of people Night Angel and I still do I love Night Angel thank you Night Angel for being awesome because Night Angel has recently come out with something I wish to review <laughs> I'm so happy about that thank you Night Angel sponsor me or sponsor the rescue. I mean, the rescue matters more. I don't really matter. I spent all my money anyways on the animals, which one of my animals is playing with her little mouse ball. So that is the story of the intake. I hope you guys enjoyed waffle and pancake story. I'll have more on my Instagram account so you can see them there. I don't really update YouTube as much and though I want to say I want to make future updates of these animals, I end up just making one introduction video and then having to deal with the majority of my rescue and then the emails and then the comments and then make videos and so it just becomes very tedious so lately I've just been making intros. Sorry about that but if you do want those updates just follow Instagram. If you don't have Instagram there is also a way you can just look at my Instagram by going to Munchie's Place for Homeless Pets at Instagram. And you can see that on a desktop. So thanks guys for everything. Sorry my cat is very distracting right now with the bell. Cute little moxie. <laughs> and if you enjoyed the video, hit the like to show your support. Comment down below with anything relevant to the video, please. And subscribe if you're new here and would like to see more from me in the future. Thanks everyone and have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye-bye.